Welcome back. It should be a fairly quick update here. We're going to go ahead and get the heads ready to go. First thing we have to do is take the 12 millimeter nuts off of the studs on the exhaust manifold. So those are going to come off. Sometimes the nuts and the studs come off together. Sometimes the nuts will come off the studs. Sort of depends. In this one, the rear two came off, uh, but the, uh, the rest did not. Getting the exhaust manifold gasket off can be a little tricky sometimes. It's got some uh, little um, tabs in it to hold it in place. Removing the studs from the head, quite simple. All you're going to do is take two nuts and thread them onto the stud. In this case, uh, you're going to use an M8 1.25 thread pitch nut, which is very common. Uh, you're just going to thread one on, so there's just enough room on the top of that stud to thread the second one on. And then you just want to cinch them up to, to each other and get them good and tight against uh, one another. And once that's done, as you try to loosen the bottom nut, it's going to try to go up the stud, but of course it can't, so it will wind up just turning the whole stud. And likewise, when you tighten the top nut, it's not going to be able to go down the stud at all, so it will tighten the stud. So once your wrench is on there, you just go ahead, turn the stud, and a lefty loosey, and out it goes. Whoopsie. Yeah, so just be careful with those. You don't want them uh, hanging around. In this case, it's real easy just to use a hemostat and pull the uh, nut out of the, uh, the valve port there. If you had this on the car, it could be a bigger problem. If the valve was open, it could fall down. But in this case, it's really nothing to worry about. It's one of the nice things about working with this off the engine. Uh, but these will come off very easily, and um, we can just reuse the studs. With the exhaust manifold out of the way, we can now go into pulling the valves and valve springs and all that out. This is an OTC valve spring compressor. There are several knockoffs on Amazon. I've read through a lot of the reviews and talked to some people. In a lot of cases, those um, will bend and not you know, be sturdy enough for this. The OTC one works perfectly, so grab the, the good one, I guess, and go to town. Essentially, it's a large C-clamp, and you have these two little mm, adapters that go on either side. And uh, for this engine here specifically, you're going to use the 23 millimeter and the 25 millimeter adapters. The 23 millimeter is going to go on the top, uh, over top of the valve like that, and the 25 millimeter there, that's going to go up and touch the valve face on the bottom of the head. With the two pieces attached, go ahead and put this on, the larger one again up on the face of the valve, the smaller one over top of the spring retainer, and we're just going to kind of crank it down like this. Turning the head over, and with a little bit of light, we can see how as we tighten our compressor right there, it's pushing that down, and that little keeper becomes exposed. It's right at the tip of the valve. Use a little magnetic tool to go in and pull those out so it's just a little two-piece thing. Those come out of the grooves in the top of the valve and once those are out we release the pressure on the spring compressor. The spring will expand, we can take the compressor out of the way and we can go ahead and pull the uh, valve and the valve spring and the valve spring retainers out. So that spring just comes right out the top, hang on to that valve so it doesn't fall and once that's out this will come out. Now, if this was a clean valve, it would pretty much just fall right out of there. And this is not a clean valve. Look at that big ball of, uh, of gunk on there. So that's just all the carbon and all the garbage on there that uh, has built up. Um, you, know, you can just kind of see how it's layered on there. I can kind of pick some of it off with my fingernail like this, and it just, just kind of comes off and honks. So these valves definitely need to be cleaned. Again, just kind of goes back to how dirty this engine is on the inside. Um, and Again, I kind of attribute it all to the EGR, but I'll get off my soapbox for a moment on that. Another piece you have to worry about is the uh, the bottom retainer. So it's basically like a little washer, and it's down there at the bottom uh, around the valve seal and, and valve guide. So with a little pick and a magnetic tool, you can pop that right out. Uh, very important that you don't lose that. I just use the pick to pop it up onto that magnet, and out it comes. And there you go. Put that aside, and, uh, and don't lose it. Next thing that has to happen, we're going to take the glow plugs out. Uh, there's three glow plugs in each head. They're eight millimeters, so I'm just going to use a little box wrench and pull those out. All 
right. And that'll come out. Just take it out. It's a little difficult sometimes. Um, you pull it out, and there you go. That's the glow plug. Set that aside. Hang on to it. Be careful with it. And then just do it five more times. All the glow plugs are out. All the valves are out. The springs, all of that stuff. And now we have uh, the head. This thing needs to be cleaned out in a bad way. Because um, if we look at this thing, it is just caked with carbon. So if you're looking in from the valve side, can you see all that? It's just... There's so much gunk and, and goo in there. I mean, honestly, it's a miracle to me how this thing could even run with this much constriction. Um, you know, just looking at the, the intake and the exhaust valves, they're just, I mean, just plugged up pretty bad. The exhaust valves actually are, aren't really half as bad as the, uh, as the intake. Um, just kind of getting in there and looking at it and just seeing how it just kind of comes out with a, with a pick. I mean, it's just... I mean, it's almost like somebody stuffed Play-Doh into the into the uh, head. It's that's awful. Now, if we turn the head around and we look inside the uh, the intake ports, see how those ports are all kind of blocked up with the uh, with the carbon there. Um, and it's kind of again kind of hard to see uh, in the video. Can't quite get the light bright enough there, but just. Just getting in there and, and just digging at it with the with the pick, it just comes out and, and just fists full of this stuff. I was able to collect a whole bunch in a coffee can as I was kind of cleaning it out and scraping it off the workbench and putting it into the coffee can just to see how much I had. And the pile of carbon that was left over was just ridiculous. I mean, it was probably the size, like two times the size of my fist if you put it all together and kind of packed it in. And that's just all in those little chambers there. So um, this is going to have to come out and be all cleaned up. Um, mating surface has to be cleaned up, so you know, we'll pull all that sealant off to prepare it for the uh, for the um, the valve cover to go back on. Final thing to prep the head, we take the valve seals out. So I recommend a valve seal pliers. Got that from Amazon. Pretty inexpensive. It's got those little grabby curved jaws with the little. Uh, um, you know, lines on them or whatever to kind of really grip it. Um, so what you're going to do is you take this plier and you're going to put it down and you're just going to grab that valve seal like that. You just squeeze, a little twist, a little pull, and it'll come out. So they're not threaded. They're just going to pull right off the valve guide like that. And there you go. There's your valve seal. So just do that for all those valves and get those valves uh, seals out of there. If you recall in the last video, um, I discovered that there was a piston that was all banged up. So uh, it took a little while, but we got the new shipment in. And we have a brand new Coleman Schmidt piston to go in uh, hole number two right here. Not to be confused with the number two hole, which is something else entirely. But anyway, so brand new piston comes with the rings already installed. You've got uh, circlips for the wrist pin and, of course, the wrist pin, which is wrapped in that uh, paper right here. So open that up and we'll have a nice shiny new wrist pin to go in there. Now that's going to go with the number two connecting rod, which is also new. I would have probably saved a lot of time and money if I would have bought a new piston rod, you know, combination. It would have come all ready to go, but I really didn't know I needed the piston. So we'll get all that lubed up and get those, uh, uh, get those circlips in there and get the piston installed uh, in a moment. But the next exciting thing to take a look at are in these bags right here. So I took these home where I've got my wash tub. Um, I use a lot of simple green and a lot of really hot water. Uh, you know, obviously keeping them rinsed. Um, the simple green and the aluminum is not so great, so you can't let it sit on there. But I was very successful in using some scrub brushes a lot of time, a lot of simple green and a lot of hot water. And those, believe it or not, are the exact same heads uh, that I was just disassembling. These things look almost brand new. They're so shiny. Um, all the mating surfaces are cleaned off. The ports are all cleaned out. There's no carbon, gunk, nothing left in there at all. They are pristine. You could pretty much eat off of them. There was a lot of labor that went into cleaning those, so you're going to take a long time doing it, but it will be worth it. I guarantee it. When you're putting these together and putting the rods on, the long arm, which is, oops, over here. So the long arm, which is right here, okay, that is going to go towards the outside of the engine, all right? So in this case, this 
is a piston. You can see we've got our arrow pointing that way. All right, so it's a right side piston. So it's going to go down like that. It's going to face to the outside, which means the long arm is going to be on this side. So this is a right side piston. Okay, it's going to face, in, when it's in the engine, it's going to face that direction. So this is the side of the engine. Piston goes in like that. And the long arm goes to the outside of the engine because this is a right side piston, a one to three piston. It's over here. So that means the long arm goes this way. Um, I, I guess the other way to think of it is uh, the markings right here, okay, are going to be, at least on the right side piston, they're going to be to the back of the rod, okay? So as this goes in, this will be to the front, no markings. This will be to the back, markings. I don't know how that relates to all the rods that they've made, but what I can tell you is that the long arm goes to the outside of the block. So when this piston goes in and you go to bolt it up, you'll look and you'll see that that's to the right side. To further demonstrate what I'm talking about here as far as the long arm going to the outside, so understand this is upside down right now. So, all right, this is really uh, as we as we look at it, okay, so front of the engine's that way. We'll rotate it around, all right? This is actually the left side of the engine, okay? It's upside down. So left side of the engine. So these are left side pistons, uh, left side pistons here, here, and down there. And these are right side pistons there. We're missing that one. And there. So you can see, let me come around. This one's perfect spot for you to look at that. You can see this this piston here, that goes to the outside of the block that the piston is on. All right, so this is a, uh, a right side piston, and that means that this here is going to face to the outside of the block. Whereas this guy here, he's a left side piston, and you notice here to this side of the block, that's his short arm. I don't know of any other way to explain that other than to show it to you. It's the best I got. I know we're starting to go a little long here, but important to show you the piston squirters. You'll need to check these, especially if you put a new piston in. I think mine got a little bit bent, and the new piston is shaped slightly differently. So I needed to go in and actually pull that piston squirter back out and adjust it so that it uh, cleared the piston. So just be sure before you button it all up that you check all those squirters and make sure they're not impact. And now we can see all six pistons are installed and the block and the rotating assembly is ready. That's all I got for this time. But next time we'll lap some valves, we'll replace some valves, we'll get some new parts, we'll bolt the heads on the engines. We got all that stuff coming up making really good progress should be running soon can't wait to see you next time